Father in heaven, uh, great is your faithfulness indeed. Lord, in Revelation 5, just what a, what a wonderful passage, Lord, for us to think about, to hear as it calibrates our hearts for what we'll consider in your word this morning. We love you, Lord. Please bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've reached the point in our service where we remember the Lord's death and his atoning work that he accomplished through it. And we'll be opening God's word together. If you don't have a copy of God's word, there'll be men here that are ready to put one in your hand. If you don't have a Bible of your own, please consider it a gift. You can take that home and read it on your own. The Bible gives the church instruction to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes by the Lord's Supper. In a moment, the elements of communion will be distributed, the bread representing his body given for us and the cup representing the new covenant established by his blood. As we remember Jesus this morning, we remember that he is the only one that brings men into good standing before God. His claim on reconciling men to God is exclusive. We see that at the very beginning of the church in the book of Acts. So let's go ahead and turn there to the book of Acts. We'll be looking at chapter 4, where the exclusivity of Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, as the Christ who saves, is proclaimed by Peter following his arrest along with John. Acts chapter 4, we'll be looking at verses 8 through 12. And the background here is that after a night in jail, Peter and John were questioned by the same men who put Jesus to death just weeks earlier. Peter and John were arrested the night before for preaching the good news that Jesus was indeed the Christ, that he suffered according to the Old Testament scriptures, and that the appropriate response to this message was repentance from sin and an expectation of his return. The apostles demonstrated the authority of this message by healing a man crippled from birth. As a result, sinners were responding to God's word. The church was growing, and the religious leaders were not happy about all this. In responding to being questioned, Peter preaches the exclusivity of Christ, beginning in verse 8. Follow along with me. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are on trial today for a benefit done to a sick man, as to how this man has been made well, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name, this man stands before you in good health. He is the stone which was rejected by you, the builders, which became the chief cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus, as the Bible reveals him, is Jesus, as the Bible reveals him, is the only one who can save you. That is, Jesus of Nazareth, as he is revealed in the Bible, is the only legitimate Christ. Religions the world over have redefined Jesus to be someone other than the Christ found in the text of God's word, denying his eternal deity, his efficacious sacrifice, or the message that he brought of repentance. The culture around you does the same, limiting Christ to a therapeutic answer to difficult circumstances. But the Christ you believe in matters. Peter does not want us to make the same mistake. In naming Jesus as the Christ, Peter adds specificity in verse 10 by saying, the one who you crucified, the one whom God raised from the dead. This wasn't to clear up confusion on his accuser's part. They knew exactly who Peter was referring to. So why the added detail? By citing the crucifixion, Peter recalls that Jesus was put to death for making himself equal with God and the judge of all men. By raising him from the dead, God confirms those claims and confirms everything the scriptures reveal about him. 
So we do well to observe everything the Bible says about Christ. But accepting Jesus on the Bible's terms divides. Verse 12 undergirds the theological truth that the means of your reconciliation to God comes exclusively through Christ as the Bible reveals him. As we take part in communion today, we remember that his death was sufficient to reconcile sinful man to a holy God because of who he is, the eternal Son of God. Fully man, able to stand in your place for your sin, and fully God, able to absorb the penalty you could never afford. As you take the wafer and the juice and consider who Jesus is as the Bible reveals him, remember that the appropriate response to this message is the, the appropriate response to the message of salvation through Christ alone is a life marked by repentance from sins and an expectation of his return. As the elements come by, examine your heart. Is your life marked by repentance? Is your life marked by an expectation of his coming? If you're with us today and you find Jesus, as the Bible reveals him, unacceptable by some measure, let the elements pass by as communion is meant for those of us who depend on everything the Bible reveals about him. If that's you, if the exclusivity of Christ is difficult to accept, please come talk to me, talk to a pastor that you see here today, or perhaps the one who invited you. Men, go ahead and serve us. As your hearts are prepared, you can take communion on your own.